Hello, uh, good morning. I'd like to uh, start this uh, the recording of this chapter, the geometric design of, of rods. First part is the horizontal, horizontal alignment. So for this um the the rodin uh, design with this uh, geometric de geometric design so it's it has two two part one is the horizontal alignment the other one is the vertical alignment so the for this um this chapter here we are doing with uh, horizontal alignment so there will be another chapter doing the vertical alignment later on okay so what is horizontal alignment um a horizontal a horizontal rod alignment is a is a usually series of uh, straight which is called tangent and circular curves so you know the rods you know the, this is about the uh, on the plan so we have uh, you know in a drawing we have the horizontal alignment will be on the plan whereas vertical alignment will be the long section so on the on the plan you, we know that the rod is um it 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 will have a lot of this uh, uh change of direction to the left to the right you know it's, it's seldom it, it is a straight line <coughs> so the rod will be have a, a, a series of uh, straight line and then curve uh, straight line curve and and so on now, seldom we have a uh, only certain places you know where the where the place is very flat you know like in the some part of Australia from I think Adelaide to Perth, you have a long stretch of straights. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be, um, you might be having the straight for only about few kilometers the most. And then you will be there will be some curvature. <coughs> okay, so the um, the curves there are two types. One is the circular curve, just a uh, the circular curve. This I mean part of a circle, and the transition curves. So transition curves are uh, called the spiral. Um, that means that this this uh, composite curve is actually made out made up of um, the transition curves uh, on both sides of a circular curve. Okay, so we we do have circular curve um, at the middle of this uh, curve uh, curvature, but on both sides we got the spirals or the transition curves. Okay, so you look at this um this uh this sketch uh so we have this uh, uh the circular curve circular curve is in the middle and both side both side of it you know is is flanked by the um, this is the transition curve transition curve okay so um this one uh on the here going into the the rod the it, it, this one is a straight it's a straight line and then exiting the curve also a straight line okay so, <coughs> so a curve should normally be used whenever there is a change of direction in a rod alignment and must be of sufficient length to avoid the appearance of a kin in the rod alignment so when there's change of direction we need to provide a curve but the curve need to be of sufficient length okay so that means that the radius um, the length of the curve, okay, um, the or the length of the the curve sus sustained by the uh, the radius, it should be sufficiently long. If it's too abrupt or too short, it will have a lot of kin, you know. The um, so certainly change of the it's very short change of direction, which is very unsightly and dangerous as well. Um, I'm not sure how about this rod. Is it the uh, is it because of earthquake or whatever you know it looks uh, unusually king, uh, kinky <coughs> horizontal road alignment without significant straight um, section are described as curvilinear sometimes we have a rod um, it doesn't have a straight um, straight line in between the curvature so they are called a, uh, the, this type of curve is considered as curvilinear so one curve here and then another curve straight away there is a you know there's a one curve joined to the other the other curve <coughs> uh, 
a curvilinear alignment normally has um, <coughs> two things. Firstly, long straight radius uh, circular curves with or without spiral transition. Okay, so uh, the long circular curves, it could be um, just a plain circular curve, that means um, no spiral transition or it has a sp spiral transition. Okay, so this one in this case, it has a transition or the spiral, you know, the, from a straight, straight line and then uh, there's a this one doesn't look, it's supposed to be a straight line, you know, the transition start from here and and it will go from, after you have have uh, done a, um, a fair distance of transition, then it will change to a circular curve, a circular curve, and then it will go back to the transition again and then, and then exit, and then go back to the, the straight line again. <coughs> okay, occasionally other types of curve, curves which conform to the polynomial mathematical relationship. So the curvilinear, uh, basically just a, you know, is is a spiral, is a curve, just um, either is a um, plan circular curve or just a, com a combination of combination of the spiral and the uh, and the circular curve, or it could be some form of um, uh, curvature based on some polynomial mathematical relationship. You know, there we got there's some sub curvature. You have this, uh, like sine curve, of course. You know, <coughs> curvilinear alignment is most suited to dual carriage ways rods, but can also be successfully used on two lines rod in flat and undulating terrains, providing overtaking provisions are not impaired. Okay, so you know, we um, for the two way two lines rod, you there need to be um. Uh, overtaking um, this uh, maneuver to be done because uh, sometimes you your car you might um, meet you might come up you might come up to a slow moving vehicle so you need to overtake so this curvilinear um, if there is no straight then this curvilinear uh, curves curvilinear uh, rod it should provide uh, the good side distance and then uh, the and then you can see quite a quite a, quite a far quite far ahead then you can do the overtaking okay for the dual carriageway it's not a problem dual carriageway you have a uh, two lens so you the slow moving will be on the left the fast moving will be on the right you know and and then the you know the just a four lens slot dual carriageway okay <coughs> but the if it's a two um two lens two way rod two lens two way let's say you look at the left you know if it's a big curve like this even the car from here this this place you know there is no car in front from here you can see probably like about half a kilometer ahead so it can do the overtaking maneuver as well so that's, that's so that's why you know this curve it it doesn't uh it doesn't have a straight straight uh, sesh, uh stretch you see these are uh, the curves and then immediately joined by another curve so this is called the like reverse curve so turning left and then straight away turning right there's no straight in between but the the radius is quite big so that's uh you know it's uh, uh it, it can uh it can provide the open speed limit um, easily <coughs> the horizontal curves of a curvilinear alignment are generally of large radius okay so just now we have seen it it's a large radius it does not normally restrict overtaking opportunities it can do the overtaking <coughs> so um so this one you know this one probably this uh, uh if you can have a big enough radius the rod you could see like um like half a kilometer ahead and then you can see there's no, no car coming even along the big radius big curvature with a large radius it can allow the overtaking as well <coughs> help reduce help reduce um it helps to reduce the headlight headlight glare uh, so you know the sometimes the night driving you in 
especially along the straight line, along the straight, straight stretch, you, the oncoming vehicles, uh, they will, if there has a high beam, then you probably is very glaring. You can't, you can't see. So actually, if it's straight stretch, uh, both the drivers, you know, op opposing traffic, they need to dip down the high beam, high beams, so they need so that people can see further ahead. But you know the if there's a curvy linear um, road, then actually you know you you don't have that problem because the 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 beam is pointing to a different direction. It's not straight. You know you it's not it, the 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 other car because along the the curve, the the headlight is not pointing at the opposite traffic. So you look at that. You know the this if you come up, you you drive along this road in the dark in the and then there's a this glaring headlight so sometimes it can blind your eyes you can't see properly so they so the thing that you need to um, um, sort of uh, deep down but on the stretch is a problem but straight on a straight straight stretch is a problem but it, on the curvature you uh, the the cause of the the headlight doesn't point to to you directly so it's not a problem <coughs> give uh, drivers a better perception of speed of approach of the opposing traffic so uh, like a straight line uh, this one the top uh, top picture you you look at a vehicle in front that's uh, maybe even a uh, few kilometers away but it could be traveling at 120 110 you know you don't know you, you, you because it's two dimension you cannot see the you cannot sort of uh, gauge the speed correctly uh, but if it's driving on the um, uh, along the curvature, is a like, sort of three. You can see the three dimension of the vehicle, so you can see this how fast is the vehicle is traveling. So it's good the curvature. You you can gauge the distance as well from the um, how far how far is it from from you, and also you can see the speed how fast it, how fast is is coming. So you can you can just uh, you know if you want to do some overtaking maneuver. You can adjust properly. You can see whether it's a safe to do overtaking or not. <coughs> Side distance requirement. Okay. <coughs> so usually, you now the um, uh, along the road, you 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 have to stop for certain thing. You know, if there's an intersection, there's a, there's a roundabout, there's a uh, traffic light, there's a con control. Uh, control and control intersection you have to stop and sometimes there are some hazard on the road as well there may be some uh, slow moving vehicle there are some vehicle that's, um, that that uh, so sort of broke down on the road just and then you have to stop and then there could be some animal crossing crossing the the road so you have to stop you know so so there'll be some hazard so we need to make sure that when you design the road, we need to provide the safe stopping side distance so that you you know you travel at uh, let's say at TK. You uh, when you look at the hazard, when you spot the hazard, you can stamp on the bread. Uh, you have, there's a reaction time, and then you the break reaction time for, for the for you to uh, to cover certain distance before you uh, you you can react to it and then stamp stamp on the brake and then break. There will be certain braking distance as well. So there will be, um, we need to have this um, like total um, sort of a stopping side distance. You know, if you are uh, travel at a higher speed, then it will take, it will need a bigger stopping side distance. If you travel at slower speed, then probably the stopping side distance will be smaller. Okay. So when the lateral construction, lateral obstruction of pavement may restrict driver side distance. The minimum radius for the adjacent horizontal curve is determined by the design speed, design speed, uh, stop inside SSD. Okay, so uh, if it's uh, you know there is no obstruction, lateral obstruction, that means there is no hill, there is no tree, no buildings to obstruct a uh, curves. You you probably can look through the the curvature, you know, can see the other side, you know, so you can see what's coming from the the other side of the curve. But if there's some obstruction, you know, there's a there's a um, hill, you know, you go around a hill, so there's some obstruction. So um, we need to design the um, 
uh, the curvature, the radius of the curvature relevant, uh, appropriately. <coughs> so, um, this, this, um, this, uh, this rod is going around um, a hue. And not sorry, this one, the up, this one, the um, this one is the obstruction about it's quite near about two one or two meter from the side of the rod. So and then you you can't see through you can't see through what is happening on that side. So you have to slow down. Um, <coughs> so what we do is that you know that if there's a certain speed you know but we let's say you you could travel sixty k or 80k but on the on the curvature if the radius is very if the radius is quite small you you could go down to 40k or 30k you know sometime you know you, on the road side the the signage said it's 25 kilometer per hour for the very um sort of um hay spin band okay so so for the every design speed there will be some reaction time um, this one, the normally the people they may have uh, like two second or two point five second, you know, the reaction time, <clears throat> and then, and then there's a breaking um, distance as well. If you're, if you are breaking from the higher speed, then you take a longer, longer distance to stop. If you travel at the lower speed, then you will take a lower, lower, uh, it will take less distance to to stop. So the the stopping side distance SSD is a combination of the um, reaction time, the distance travel. You know when you uh, when you first look at the hazard and then you react to it, it may take one or two two second. You know then then this one or two second you have travel probably uh, fifty kilometer already. You know like this one fi sorry fifty meter. So it will take a while before you you stem the break. So the this. This give us the stop inside distance, <coughs> and from this uh stop inside distance, you know the let's say we have the uh let's say you travel open uh let's say eighty k one one five, one one five. So <coughs> then the, on this chart here, the horizontal stop inside distance, and then we have this uh you know this chart we have the lateral lateral clearance of to lateral uh, clearance to obstruction and then we have this many straight line the radius uh, this uh, from this side distance and then uh, and then the lateral clearance to, ob to obstruction we can come up with a self uh, radius so for example just now is 115 so this 115 probably is somewhere here and then the lateral obstruction minimum is 3 so let's say 3 3 meter uh, then um, your your radius should be like uh, between 400 and 600 so let's say 500 okay let's so that means that the for for a side distance of uh, stopping side distance of uh, 115 uh, you you might need a radius of uh, 500 meet, meter and for lateral obstruction of uh, 3 meter if your lateral uh, the um, clearance, you know, the if the um, obstruction is let's say five meter from the from the rod, uh, from the central of the of the lens, then five meter here, you know, the um, let's say here, so five meter is here, and then the one one five here. So you will need a uh, three hundred. Uh, the, your radius will will have to, uh, will have to re be reduced to go to like three hundred uh, meter radius. <coughs> Okay, so that's about the side distance. From the side distance, how we can um, find the radius uh, for the various speed, you know. So, so that means that, you know, if your radius is that much, you know, because of the topography, you have that much speed, you uh, you you need to achieve that certain uh, side distance. For example, 115. Um, <coughs> You want to so uh, that means that let's say you but your radius is uh, on the ground maybe it's uh it's quite a tight it's a quite tight band let's say it's a hundred it's hundred and then the lateral obstruction obstruction is um, let's say five meter so uh in that case 
then you know so the the ranges is fixed actually they come up with the designs uh this uh what is that the, let me see 100 okay the and the obstruction is five and so the the side distance is uh, actually is uh, like 60 65 65 the stop inside distance 65 if you look back at the, the chart here 65 uh, let's say let's say we are about this about this place you know this uh, that means that the um, the speed limit probably you need to reduce it to um, 60 60 k for that has for that for that uh, band <coughs> okay so table 2.12 show the SSD on the level grad figure 4.4 show the relationship between the SSD the horizontal curve radius and lateral current uh, to the obstruction so just now we, we look through the the one with the the chart the the table and the figure we look through already uh, I'm going to show you a, just an example um, about to about the uh, to find the radius for the various uh, design speed and the, and the lateral obs obstruction <coughs> okay so uh, let's say the speed we assume to be 50k 50 km per hour and then the reaction time is 2.5 second then SSD go to 55 design speed the, um, so the uh, reaction time is for 2.5 you cover 34.7 meter break-in is 18.9 so the rounded uh, stop inside distance SSD is 55 so for 55 SSD and then the um, um, lateral clearance to obstruction let's say is 5 so you need um, the radius it be it's between 60 and 80 isn't it so it's about 75 so we can come up with the the required radius for this band is uh, 75 just like let's just now I talk about you know if you have a radius you have to construct a rod you know because of the hue is quite a mountainous topography so probably you have to have a radius of let's say maybe 50 let's say 50 here then you can actually you can just walk back walk, uh, walk backwards uh, and then can find out what's the design design speed required for the rod <coughs> the relationship is valid when the SSD is not greater than the length of the curve and assuming and assume that the driver's eyes and the subject sighted objects above the center of, of the inside lens there's no or very little vertical curvature that means that your <coughs> SSD your stopping side distance uh, is not longer than the the uh, the the curvature the the the, cur the band you know so it has to be the stopping side distance need to be within the curvature okay if it's long that's 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 the reason that we not you know the the curvature I think in last page, last slide, we said that we need to have, we need to have a long uh, curvature, uh, so so that you know we can apply this thing. You know the also because of the the, the aesthetic aesthetic, aesthetic aesthetic as well. You know it's too short bang. It's, it appears to be very kinky. Okay, demonstration of different SSD um, in video below. So I'm not going to look through the video. So you this YouTube we can look through in your own time it shows that how um, what happened you know you when you stop from various um, speed you know from I think it's from 50 60 80 you can see that there's uh, how it how the designs how the speed of the vehicle how is it um, sort of a relate how is it um, um, related to the, the stop inside distance you know so just just now as we see just now the chart here is is the um, is related to you know if travel 50 uh you you need a uh, like 50, uh, 50 to 55 meter distance to stop if you travel at 80 you need 115 it's almost double if you if you travel at 100 you need a 170 so you know that's why it's the the like the the um, rod in the urban area they need they want to uh, reduce the speed limit for example you know they reduce to 30 so you can 
stop within the distance of uh, you know 25 to 30 meter so it's uh it's a is much is sort of is safer for the pedestrian you know from the 50 you is uh 55 you know go, go down to 30 so the yeah so in in term of pedestrian safety you know the lower speed limit is um is um safer <coughs> truck stopping distance so um, road curvature adversely if affects the stopping distance of uh, vehicle trucks more so than other vehicles until reliable research figures are available the following guidelines are suggested for use of on curve of less than 400 meter <coughs> so if the cur you have a curvature of 400 meter and then um, there uh, on the on the road usually they have a certain amount of uh, the trucks you know the, the heavy vehicle <coughs> sometimes it could be like certain road will be less you maybe few percent sometimes it could be quite substantial it could be like 20 percent certain stretch of road there's a lot of uh, freight they've been um so been carry you know by a lot of trailers a lot of uh sometimes they you have some logging trucks as well because they transport the uh, uh, they've got timber uh sort of timber industry so they there's quite a lot of logging trucks so so there's some guideline you know if there's a lot of truck probably you have to take take into account uh the the trucks you know the we, we so we need to uh increase the um, stop inside distance um because the truck you, you take a longer time to stop than the motor vehicle uh if the Let's say if the designs if the design vehicle is a rigid truck, the stopping side stopping distance should be increased by ten percent. Okay, that means that you know the um <coughs> so whatever you know let's say it's a uh, eighty one one five, if it's rigid truck you have to increase by ten percent. <coughs> If the so the what's what's a rigid truck? Uh, this is a rigid truck. So the the uh, the 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 whole truck will turn. You know, there's just one, uh, just one sort of. Um, it doesn't. It's a. It's different from articulated truck. So we can see that means that all the axle, all the wheel is a one, one body, one fixed body. There's no. <coughs> so that's rigid truck. If the vehicle is a articulated articulated trucks, stopping that side distance should be increased by twenty percent. So this um this is longer truck. Most of the longer truck they cannot be rigid truck because otherwise they cannot make um they cannot turn on a on a on a very tight tight band. So so this one the for example this truck here they got the these are uh, tires here. So they actually they got something below this container here so that this uh it can turn uh the 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 front part of the truck will turn and then uh so they're not in a straight line so there'll be a you know there's a curve you know so the bot so that the turning the the turning point is uh just below the container i think sitting on this truck at the back of the truck so this this is called the artic articulated trucks so for this type of truck we need to increase the uh the stop inside distance to 20 percent so that means that uh, if you increase the stop inside distance you walk backwards then you have to reduce if you have that certain radius you probably have to reduce your your speed just in consideration of the uh the, tra the traffic so um the this one the um, this trucks you know the especially articulated truck when they break, they got this a uh, jackknife, you know, that the can go like sideways. Uh, so there's a, there's a YouTube showing that. But I think I probably got um, a small video clip to show you as well. Let's see where they can find it. So 
that's uh, called a jet knife. Uh, so just, uh, the, when it break, the, the back of the, the container just uh, goes sideways. <coughs> Curve widening. Okay. So the um, usually you know on a straight line, the truck usually it will be sufficient for the uh, the heavy or light vehicle to be in within the land, um, because it's uh you know the 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 width of the vehicle could be like for small vehicle could be one point five to big truck could be two point five meter wide. So you see the road is three meter is sufficient for the straight line, but on turning, on making a, uh, making a turn, turn, uh, at a at a, uh, turns at the this corner, then the, the, they will try the the car the or the vehicle will try to occupy more space, so they need to make so we need to, um widen the curve so you know it, because it occupy more space so so for example usually on on the hay pin hay, hay pin curve you usually need to widen the curve you look at that so we need to wait to widen a bit you know so let's say the the normal width of the land is uh, three meter wide you might want to uh, at the at the curvature you might want to increase it to 3.5 meter wide <coughs> this is commonly known as a curve widening and is required for one or more of the following reasons so these are the reasons for why we want to widen the curve firstly vehicle traveling on the curve occupy a great, greater width of pavement than they do on the strap and loss speed the rear wheel track inside in one front wheels and at high speed the rear wheel tracks outside the front wheels <coughs> So it's especially pronounced, you know, if it's a big truck making a hay, hay spin, hay, hay pin turn, you know, it will sort of cover, it will go across the land as well to, uh, to make the turn. <coughs> so this one probably is excessive, but you know, sometimes, you know, it's like so many hay pin turn, you know, the other side of the road, you know, go down and then boy, so the big truck is um, quite challenging to drive along that. <coughs> So, but uh, we still need to like widen the road it, so it make it safer, okay. And secondly, vehicles tend to deviate more from the center line of the traffic lanes on the curve than on the straight. On the curve, people try to make the shortcut, you know, to uh, try to uh, try to um, go around the curve at the shorter shorter distance. So the ch shorter distance, you know, it will, uh, it's not safe, but it's of, uh, you know, it's just shortcut here, so that it's go over the lens, you know. If uh, this one is a bit dangerous, you can know what happens for income on. There's another car may come in from the, around the bend that very soon. Thirdly, to maintain clearance between vehicles to doors on straight section of road, so you you still need to maintain clearance. You know, you if you. The two vehicle come to cross, you might have a, um, you know, collision. <coughs> so these are three reasons why we want to um, widen the curve. <coughs> Approximate uh, values for the total amount of curve widening required by the single unit design truck on a circular curve, uh, circular arc section on the two lanes are shown in this table below. So the sort of um, guidelines here, you know, the um, curvature, uh, 30 to 50, 50 to 100, 100 to 250, 250 to 750, over 750, these are the curvature. And then the width of the rod. So this is, um, <coughs> normally this one is for the two lens, two lens, two way rod, two lens, two way, so six meter wide. That means that each lens is three meter. 6.5 meter wide so the each one land each land will be 3.25 and 7 meter wide each land will be 3.5 7 7.5 will be 3.75 so uh the widening uh if it's a very slow speed let's say 30 to 50 and uh, 6 meter wide and you need to widen 2 meter so that means that each land will get 
uh, additional one meter. So the total width will become now at the band will become eight meter. So the lens, so the lens width will be uh, four meter, four meter. And if you uh, have a, uh, let's say you at hundred, hundred meter, uh, hundred meter radius, and then your rod is seven meter wide. Uh, that means three point five. So you only get about total of 0.5 meter um, uh, widening. That means that each each land only get 0.25, so not that much. Okay, so if you if your rod is wide enough, then you don't get any widening. Or if your if the radius is big enough, like over 750 radius, um, or if the land is you know more than six meter wide, the two lands two way rod, then you don't get any widening. <coughs> So this is an example as well. <coughs> so actually you can work out the land widening as well according according to this formula as well. That's a formula to work out the thing. But if, but this one as a guide you, you could do that you could do with this uh, table as well to work out how much widening. So but there's a provision for the formula. You can plug in the formula and then find the widening. <coughs> Horizontal curves. <coughs> okay, so how we're going to design um, whether we need to pro, uh, design for the horizontal curve. Sometimes you know the uh, when the when the curvature the change of direction is so um, so so small. You know the the change of direction, the bearing change probably about one. Um, one degree or one degree or less than one degree sometimes you it's so it's so the change is so slight that you it's not noticeable so you could do without the uh you could do without um sort of introducing the horizontal curves but if the change is quite substantial you know you change um the change of direction of uh let's say the bearing um let's say 10 degree 20 degree uh, you cannot just uh, do the uh, with a straight two straight line. You know the travel one straight line. Then turn. You cannot do that. It's too. You need to provide a curvature at that intersection point. So the so for um let me say for a very 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 small change of direction like probably like later we we'll see that within like one uh within one one degree you could do without providing any curvature but if it's more is uh, mostly you know the um, curvature is big enough that you need to provide the, the horizontal curves okay so <coughs> so the design standards for horizontal curves on state highways are derived from the basic design principle we have shown in table 4.2 4.3 so these are horizontal curve this one is um uh <coughs> that's the way they the rod go up the hill you cannot go up straight away you know the, you cannot this is probably only on you know the military vehicle can go up you know or those um re, those are uh, high power vehicle which can this this one the <coughs> the stop could be like 50 easily 50 40 percent 50 percent you know um the so that means that um one in probably one in five one in four you know the one vertical uh four horizontal so it's very steep so the most of the vehicle will not be able will not be able to go up the hill so what they do is they go this um zigzag zigzag and then go they go like this and then it will reduce the um, uh the grab of the rod but it take a longer distance you know you you have a longer distance and then you just go this zigzag zigzag, zigzag up and then you uh, it will go up the hill, um, so the, most of the vehicle can do that, you know. <coughs> and um, in table, this 4.2 and 4.3, uh, 4.2, 4.3. So the minimum tangent deflection angle before a horizontal curve must be used. So look at that, you know, the if a two lens arterial, um, two lens rod. Uh, maximum tangent reflection angle before uh, so this one if the change of direction is the um, one 
one degree, then not more than one degree, then you don't need to provide a horizontal curves. Two lens collector, one one degree, and minor rod, one degree thirty minutes. Multi lens rod, the uh, the requirement is is higher, so you have to go to this uh, um, like thirty second, thirty second. Oh yeah, up there is a dual carriageway. The requirement is even more stringent. You know, fifteen second. No, fifteen. So not not second. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. So these are you know if your rods are uh, which um the change of direction is within this limit. Actually, you you have you don't have to provide any horizontal curve. <coughs> um, minimum length of horizontal curve need needed to avoid unsightly king okay so um the the horizontal curves so you need to the you need to provide the minimum uh curve uh, length so like for the motorway minimum is 250 meter expressway 200 meter arterial is to 150 meter so that means that the rod you you cannot ch have a very short curve length like 20 meter yes it looks like very very sharp very, very kinky the rod so it's and must safe as well <coughs> although any radii greater than the uh, minimum shown in the design speed selected can be used the range of curved radii suitable for give giving design speed is normally a function of speed environment okay so so it should probably I think we need to go even that the uh the this for example the the radii is um minimum is hundred probably you have to go bigger okay. you should you should go like um two hundred or one fifty you know. normally we don't stick to the bare minimum <coughs> good design practice avoid the avoids the use of minimum radii radii and pavement rotation that's in excess of 2.5 percent per second except in extreme cases so we we avoid we avoid the use of the minimum radi radii and also the pavement rotation you know the pavement it will rotate when you go around a band uh, here is here it says that 2.5 percent per second <coughs> so this is um you know this are uh, the how the rod how the uh it this lens here the this side is outside lens of a of a curvature it will from this uh, cross fall it could be like uh stopping this way going down from the from the central line to the edge it could be like two percent minus two percent minus two percent let's say the other side is let's say you know minus two percent as well so when you go around the bend it will rise up the the edge you the edge you rise up you know and then the <coughs> go to certain point it'll be level and then you you go up the edge should be higher than the central line and then go around the band and then it will go back again you know this is a very reverse very short reverse curve curve so and we reach that point the edge should be lower than the the central line again so this is the how fast we should change the the uh the rise of the the edge you know the the change of the uh the uh change of the uh this one the uh what is it called the um the lens okay that's called the change of the rotation okay the pavement rotation you know the the edge will go up and then go down so we we normally we should not be like uh beyond 2.5 percent per second 2.5 so that uh the rod is uh for example normally it's like 2.5 percent the what 2.5 percent is that it will mean one in 40 one time one divided by 40 multiplied by 100 so they give us 2.5 percent so the road normally like two point five percent like down downwards and then you go up the outside edge go up to zero so that is um you know um per second so that means that um how fast the vehicle can travel if let's say it's going at uh eighty k 
it will cover about 16.67 let me just check 80k yeah 80 80 80k divided by 3600 ah sorry uh, it will if travel 80k it will the in one second it will travel 22.22 meter 22.22 meter so so the change of um, rotation like 2.5 percent you know downwards the edge is lower than the center and then we'll until we reach a point when the edge is um, when it's level the edge and the center line is level it will take like per second if you travel speed is 80k then it will take um it will need to take like two 22.22 meter to achieve this 2.5 percent per second <clears throat> super elevations and side friction requirement are also reduced at the radii greater than the minimum by transit conve convention no less than the maximum value <clears throat> okay So super, eleva super elevation and side friction requirement also reduce at the radii greater than the minimum okay to less than the maximum okay so that this is a super elevation um this is that means that the when the uh the the land is been tilted up at a greater than the cost fall that means that the, for example the cost fall here is um uh it could be 2.5 percent but this super elevation, it could be much higher. It could be like um, the there's a, a table actually later on we show. It's like not more than ten percent. It could be five percent, you know. So the thing is tilted up more. Um, so this one is uh, the outside land will will go from here. Let's say minus twenty two point five percent. It will go to level, and then it could be like five percent plus five percent tilted up. You know from the from this slope so the inside lens this inside of the curve this one is a uh, 2.5 percent tilted uh, to the edge and then maintain 2.5 percent but this point here it will rise up to plus five percent as well plus five percent and then we'll go back to the the previous one <coughs> okay the the curve notation used in this um, NZTA Highway Ge Geometric Design Manual SHGDM and formula which can be used for manual calculation of critical curve details while developing the horizontal alignment scheme are shown in figure 4.6, 4.7, 4.8 So a lot of this um, the uh, the sketch the sketch of the circular curves sketch of the the, uh, the spiral curve and all the formula <coughs> so this was for the spiral for the circular curve so they got all this form formula you know the to find the <coughs> um, uh, this one the for the circular curve they just have two two point TC and then CT TC means that this point is tangent <coughs> tangent to uh, tangent to curve and then ct is um, curve to tangent so you this one for uh, mostly for the you know the uh, the contractor when they want to build a road they need to get all the points where are the, all these points so they can set the point for construction and so, so for example this one the tangent tangent and then the, um, how much is this on the the, I think it's called the ET external distance they got formula for that and then the MO MO is the minimum ordinate distance I think is this one and then the LC long long uh, court land this one so actually we need to find the curvature land as well okay so this one is the next one is the uh, plan transition curve details okay so this is a part of the curve Part of the curve, transition curve 
uh, composite curve. Okay, so from they have a TS to SC. Normally, the you know the they have this one the for the transition curve they have this TS to SC and S and then to CS to uh, ST. So that means that this is the tangent to spiral and then spiral to curve and curve to spiral uh, okay. curve to sp curve to spiral and then spiral to tangent again so so this is just the one part of it you know the from tangent tangent to spiral and spiral to curve so so this one the uh, there's a formula for all the formula required for that you know the uh, this one there's a p here p here is like a shift distance you know this is the um, that means that you know this this actually uh this the effect of this uh the the transition curve is that you know this if you this one the circular curve if you uh sort of uh, extrapolate it you know the dashed line here actually this is part of the circular curve so that means that the transition curve it, it you push the um, the curve in inside okay by a distance of p so the uh, the shift this a p is a shift uh the p the shift so the shift it shift the whole circular curve inside because of this transition transition curve shift by p <coughs> so there are uh, a lot of formula find what's the the tangent distance and then the length of the length of the circular curve so they have a two distance as well um, this one you need to find the length of the I, I believe you need to find the length of the um, SL this one is the um, plans transition length so there's a plan, plan transition transition length and then this one the L here actually is the um, the circular length so there are like this for this transition curve you have a um, spiral land spiral land okay the SL and then you have the circular curve land and they, they they have a proportion as well we need to look at it later on like I think it's um uh, this one is not proportional it should be like one the minimum is one uh, one transition and then at least 1.5 circular and then one one again it goes up to the, the ratio is at 1, 1. 1.5, 1 to 1, 3, 1. Okay, the, usually the circular section is longer than the transition. <coughs> so a horizontal curve must be used when a deflection angle between the intersecting thread tangent uh, section of rod exit doors in the table 4.2. Okay, so this one just now we say that you know if it's um if exit all this um the uh, the deflection uh then we need to use the um uh, the we need to use the uh the curvature <coughs> so the deflection and this is the deflection angle i i is the deflection tangent deflection angle you know your your straight line uh this is the intersection point so this this line and that line the channel of direction is i um same thing for this uh this uh, transition curve as well uh this i here so the line will <coughs> this this line this uh maybe this is this uh you know when you do the surveying this this is a straight line and then you change of bearing then this is another another straight line so the change of direction of the two straight line is i which is the tangent deflection angle <coughs> the minimum <coughs> um, minimum length of the horizontal curve is determined mainly by aesthetic consideration and therefore very subjective so uh, we try to have a, the minimum uh, the what's that the radius the the length of the but horizontal curve. That's now I think we saw that you know it should be like uh, motorway. It should be like at least two hundred fifty meter. The the 
the cur curvature the curve length okay so if you don't want to be too short otherwise it, it will appear to be very kinky <coughs> okay the radii needed to give a curve of sufficient length to avoid a uh, unsightly king in the horizontal alignment in flat terrains is given in table 4.3 i think we we'll look at that while table 3.1 indicate a minimum length of curvature requires requires for some typical uh, design situations <coughs> okay what is that <coughs> minimum curve to some <coughs> so not sure what is that this one related to so the radii needed to give a curve of sufficient length to avoid and we need to look at this table 3.4.3 and 3.1 I think it's um, uh, where is that <coughs> 4. Point, uh, this one three point one. You know, four point four point three. This one, the minimum minimum length, and this desirable minimum radius for horizontal curve. So these are the minimum, like two fifty for motorway, two fifty, two hundred, one fifty for the different type minimum curvature length. While for the different speed, you know that uh, the you you need to have the desirable desirable minimum radius. So it is um, like thousand, one thousand one hundred. 1,400, 1,600 and so on. So, the highest speed, we desire a, a bigger radius. <coughs> Two convenient methods for determining the length of the horizontal curve, which satisfy um, most aesthetic requirement. Okay, so, um, two convenient methods. So, the, uh, the circular arc portion of the transition curve should be approximately 1.5 to 3 times the transition spiral curve. Okay, so we let them look at that. Um, <coughs> so the, um, that means that the circular arc, the circular part of the curve should be 1.5 to 3 times the transition spiral curve. Okay, so if we look at that. This is the sp spiral, this is the circular curve, and this is a spiral as well, because this, uh, this is a tangent. So, uh, ideally, this, um, this spiral length needs to be at least 1.5 to 3 times longer than this one, the spiral. So, spiral is between TS and SC. Okay, so... <coughs> The length of the plan circular curve should be about the distance traveled by a vehicle during one second of the curve design speed. So the length of plan circular curve, plan circular curve. So this is a this is the length of plan circular curve. It should be um, the length the distance should be at least you know travel in one second of the design speed. Let's say the. Uh, that's not what I gave a, I gave an example at TK. So um, this length should be about twenty two point two two meter at least. So so this one the at least to for the vehicle to cover in one second. Okay, from SC to CS. <coughs> the letter can be calculated okay by the form following formula the length so the length of the curve, uh, which is actually in this case is a circular curve. Uh, so the curve actually is made up of uh, you know the um, this total curve from this is spiral curve and then this is the circular curve and then so actually make up of uh, one circular curve and then two spiral curve okay so that's the that make up the whole um, but when we talk about the L L the this is the um, the circular the curve length L and then this SL is a spiral length. Okay, spiral length on both sides. <coughs> so actually the, the length of the circular curve can be found by this formula V squared divided by 36. The 36. Okay, so just now I said that you know the if the speed is at k uh, so we, what you do is the at just at t times at t divided by 36. Because uh, speed at the at 
uh, 80 km per hour change to uh, meter per second so your 80 have to multiply by 1000 to become meter and divide by uh, the time one hour change to second you be one hour will be 300 300 3600 seconds let me 60 60 okay 60 times 60 <coughs> circular curve <coughs> plane circular uh plane circular arcs horizontal curve may be used in horizontal alignment if the plane transition shift distance p is calculated by the formula is less than 250 meters Meter. So there's there's a provision, you know, we don't want we have a provision whether to use the spiral spiral curve or not. Okay, um, the one of the provision is that if the shift is less than uh, two hundred fifty meter. So just now we look at that, you know, this is the shift. Okay, the shift here, the this the dash line is represent part of the circular curve. Part of circular curve, you know, the circular curve is in the middle. You need to stand on both sides. This is a dashed line, show the path of the circular curve. So, th this uh, spiral curve you help to push the circular curve inside. If the push here, the, the P, the P is a transmission, uh, transition curve. If it's less than 250, then uh, we let's say 250 mm. Then if it's less than that, actually this one the provision, you don't have to. You just ha need to have a circular curve. You don't need to have a spiral on both side of the circular curve. So this um, the this p actually you can f we can find it by this formula as well. S p equals sl square divided by zero point zero four times r. So sl is a plan plan transition length. Okay, the p is a plan. So equal to this uc square times 35.81 divided by r r is the circular arc radius uc is a unique chord from table 2.9 and 2.10 so this one we need to find the uc as well um 2.9 2.10 we see <coughs> so i think something at the back uh 2.9 2.10 let me see I'll just go back going Okay, things here. <clears throat> so the UC there's a minimum unit chord for every design speed. You know the they have um, unit chord because later on we need to find there's a table and then that table this unit chord is a scale fa scaling factor. You know you, you you get from the standard table and then regardless of the the design speed and then uh, for let's say for fifty the depending on the your reaction time 50 then you got 8.2 for 2.5 sorry not reaction time this is um, the rotations rot, uh, rate of rotation 2.5 percent per second 2.3.5 percent per second so 50 you know if it's 2.5 percent per second is 8.2 if 3.5 percent per second is 7 if you go design for 100k then you uh, the chain it will go up to 31.9 and then this one is you just stick to this one so you, when it's when it's um speed is very high you you cannot use the um this one the 3.5 percent per second so the rotation is too much okay so <coughs> <coughs> okay so this one the uh, so the this one's a shift. We need to find a shift. Uh, so the sh the plane trans transition shift. Whether we check need to check whether it's um uh is it less than two fifty or or more than two fifty. If it's less than two fifty, actually we we can just um ignore the spiral curve. We just use we just do with a circular curve. If it's the p is equal to uh more than two fifty, then you have to adopt the spiral curve on both side of the circular curve. <clears throat> okay, I think this one I, I sh I've shown an example as well. You know the um, <coughs> R. This one the let's say assume that the radius is 
300 and then the velocity is 80 rotation is 2.5 percent from table okay 2.9 okay just now the table i show you the uc equal 18.6 and you find that the sl equal this much 41.29 so the p equal to 236 which less than 250 so no need for transition curve so we just uh we, we don't have this um ts um ts was at the uh, sc uh, and then the cs st so in that case we, we don't need that so we just go straight to just this one tc we just have the circular curve just have tc and ct okay so this is for the plan circular curve okay the, this is more simpler <coughs> so if the radius is 100 uh, you know from down from 300 speed we still keep it as at the rotation is the same sl equal to 123.88 and then the p is so much bigger 6394 is greater than 250 so we have to implement the transition curve <coughs> okay not for the transition horizontal curve design um it says that you know the uh very constraint some constraint design condition mountainous terrain and other similar low speed pavement may be the rotation may be go up to 3.5 per second okay <coughs> So sometimes you know it's extreme. We we need to rotate it faster. Otherwise, it's gonna cope with the change of the um, uh, the alignment. <coughs> because uh, you need to rotate fast. Because from here you need from the uh, rotate here, and then you need to rotate backwards to the other the other direction. The rotation. <coughs> um. So normally it's uh, not desirable to have this uh three point five percent. Uh, because um, to, it's probably is uh, more to do with uh, comfort. You know, if you rotate so fast, people will get car sick. You know, if you rot, uh, it's people so we we'll, we we'll throw out. You know, if it's your your car, you so you rotate from one direction to the other direction is too fast. People just they just some people will get car sick. See, um, trouble sickness. <coughs> yeah. So for the uh, divide divided rods. That means a uh, draw crash way or whatever. We this we want to have a lower rotation, so it's more compatible, like two, um, like two percent per second. <coughs> okay, transition curve. Just now, uh, transition curve. Just now, this um, you know the. Okay, just now we talk about transition curve okay so we <coughs> transition curve help helps to reduce to produce a smooth placing alignment when joining a strat or tangent section of rod into to a circular curve or when joining two adjacent curves so we look at this picture here um this is the uh the top one is um <coughs> Uh, can you see it circular this circular here this is spiral so this one the top one it just um, it just it doesn't it doesn't have a transition curve so you look at the uh, the road the transition of the side slope start here the car will pull off to the right even while you are in a straight so this one look more pronounced the curve the curvature but with the spiral curve on both sides actually this part you know the radius seems larger you know the because uh, just now we see that you know the the circular the circular curve being if you have a spiral curve spiral transition you've been pushed inward towards the center of the circle so this one the radius looks bigger okay so it's um actually the aesthetically so it looks more pleasing you know, with a transition but just that you know if we if the p the shift is um smaller than two 250 mm you don't need to do that if it's more than 250 we need to implement the transition curve on both side of the circular curve <coughs> the resultant compound curve normally contain a planned transition section either side of the central circular arc section and commonly known as transition curve 
So this is a we call it either we call it a spiral curve or transition curve. Okay. So uh, so this spiral transition curve is on both sides of the circular uh, circular curve. Okay, so this one the probably is not represent correctly. Normally the circular section is longer. The proportion of that is the circular section is one point five to three times longer than the spiral curve. <coughs> the plane transition shape I extend the. Um, the plan the plan transition shifts the extended circular arc away from the extended straight uh tangent line with objective as follow. So the um, the spiral or the transition you provides a convenient length of the rod over which the super elevation and for widening is applied. So actually it's provide a convenient rod for the super elevation to apply, so, you know. Uh, I can show you <coughs> Uh, let me see. You see the <coughs> look at that. Uh, so this one is a uh, transition curve. Actually, you know the here the rod is uh, we know exactly where you're going to turn the um, the lever is at this point T S you know T S and then you reach here. Actually, this one supposed to be a straight line. Full elevation will be at S C S. Where's for circular curve? You you don't have the point then the at this point you don't have the point of reference of where is that the the outside uh, lens will be le will be level. We just we not just know that it's a sixty percent uh, from the T C okay and then forty percent forward it will come to a point of uh, full uh, this one the super elevation. But for the transition curve it defines quite well. TS or ST, you know, there's a this are from the other, the other side. Okay, so we know that straight away, you know, at this point is represented, you know, is um, uh, the level from from this um the uh the uh the edge this edge height is um you know is a uh, below, and then it rises to the same level as the central line. Okay, so we know this position of the the pavement the lens is like that and then the full elevation at happened at the SC okay <coughs> okay so this will provide a convenient line of rod over which super elevation or widening is applied can improve the appearance of the rod particularly on a switch where a rigid handrail allows uh, uh, follows the uh, exact rod alignment, so it, it helps. It helps to improve the uh, the appearance of the rod. Can improve the appearance of rod where a curve is visible in plan at the end of long stretch. <coughs> so actually, it can improve the appearance. Uh, this is a uh, the this one the dash line the the dash is a uh, you know this one is if it's just a circular, uh, circular curve. But this one, the the full lines, uh, they call it clotoid. Uh, this uh, that means that is a, uh, the the transition curve. Uh, the it's a, the curvature of transition curve or spiral curve. So you see the thing being pushed. It, uh, the the circular arc, circular curve being pushed inside towards the center of circle. So this one appear to be a bigger radius. Bigger it is, and it is so inspire confident for the driver to maintain the speed. You know, if this one looks like a very sharp turn, whereas you, you, you introduce a spiral, spiral, before the circular curve, you sort of uh, you you sort of uh, increase, uh, have a look looks like have a bigger radius. <coughs> Provide a line of rod over which the steering adjustment can be made, particularly in reverse curve situations. So your spiral, uh, so you know you can, um, instead of a, you know, uh, you can have a place of time of adjustment, adjustment for the. <coughs> okay, so if this both of this curve they have this um spiral, so actually get they can adjust. Even though you have a short, you may have a short tangent, but of course, it's desirable to have a longer tangent 
longer stretch between the two curve. So, but uh, having said that, if you have a spiral, the spiral have to adjust. You know, it's a transition, transition from circular curve to the to the stretch. So the spiral will provide the sort of um, adjustment length as well for the for the uh, drivers to adjust the steering the steering. <coughs> Provide a length of road over which the speed adjustment may be made between curves of different radii. So you can make adjustment, you know, just like this one. The this one the this one probably is a bigger curve than this one. Um but it's sort of hard to judge because it's further. So but anyway, you know you can for the driver you can adjust the, uh the speed from because of the I think just because of the uh uh this transition. If you don't have transition, it's straight away is a circular curve, and then circular curve and then straight away jump to circular curve. Probably is hard to achieve the speed adjustment. But you've got spiral, is and it, and it's probably easier. <coughs> Where not to use the plan transition? <coughs> um, <coughs> so the just now we I think we have covered this. Um, we don't use the plan transition when the shift distance is less than 250 which is uh, this one you know if it's less than 250 then we don't use the um, spiral we just see uh, you just we just adopt the circular arc <coughs> okay secondly it's not necessary when the shift distance is less than approximately half the extra widening so that means that the shift distance just now shift let's say you got a shift of uh, 50 so no sorry sorry 500 500 mm but if you have uh, let's uh, let's say okay um, let's say you uh, whether okay maybe uh, 300 I get, get 300 mm at the shift but if it's uh, compared to the widening uh, just now we have the widening where is that <laughs> Let's say you have widening of let's say two lens. Uh let's say this one is um let's say uh this one widening is one meter and that means that means that on each lens it will be uh point five. So in this case, even though you your curvature you need to sh you your shift is uh like that sounds like say is uh point three, but the widening is point uh this one point five. So in this case you don't need to provide the spiral as well because uh, the widening will take care of it so you just use um, the circular curve instead of the spiral uh, in, instead of uh, using the spiral the spiral circular and the spiral <coughs> so this one okay the if the widening is is um big enough so then you don't you don't use the uh, the don't use a spiral Thirdly, may not be appropriate in low speed environment where drivers regularly regulate the speed travel speed from their judgment of the apparent curvature of the road ahead so in this case uh, the road the the width of the land will be seen widened as well so this one we don't need to have a spiral is so it doesn't provide any meaning um, any um, any meaning at all so because the the driver will slow down in this case maybe it'll slow down to 25 kilometer per hour so this the spiral has will lost its meaning as well <coughs> uh, fourthly should not be used on a small radii curves in low speed environment where pavement widening to accommodate the tracking width required by heavy vehicles in this way. so i think i probably just covered that as well so there are four four situations whereby you don't need to to use the spiral curve so you just use the circular curve you can satisfy this for provision so the, we look at this are uh, the ratio transition circular arc transition ratio okay so just now I think we talk about it as well when all or most of the transition horizontal curve is visible in plan an approaching driver is Transition land, circular arc land, transition land ratio should be in the range of 1 to 1.5 to 1. So this three parts, 1, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1. 
one transition, one circular, one transition. And desirable, desirable is one to one. <coughs> so, so this one like one, you can have a, this is just an example. One circular is 2.5 is one. Okay. <coughs> Greater ratios are acceptable where the whole curve is not visible in plan to approaching drivers. <coughs> it can be shown that the spiral angle theta okay, equal to i divided by 2 into x plus 1. Okay, so uh, x is this one, the uh, what's that? This thing, the <coughs> um. The the ratio ratio of the you know this one one two one one whatever one one two five one one three one or one two one so this one the x when we want to find the this one the theta we, we need this one to f to design for the um the the circular the circular curve and the spiral curve okay so we need to uh, Phi equal to i. This i is the. <coughs> Let me see. How to go there. <coughs> so this is the i, the the deflection, the deflection. Uh, i is the <coughs> tangent deflection angle. Okay, and and we have this um. Phi, phi is the address angle here, angle here phi, and then we have an angle here. I think that what is that? Theta. There's a i. This uh, this i the the deflection angle i is this one. Same thing. <coughs> uh, I think we have the theta here, and then the phi and the theta here. Theta. Okay, this one this is the angle. So this angle theta. So we need to know the angle theta when we do the trans when we want to find the the all the thing in the transition curve. <coughs> so let me see how to go back. <coughs> okay, so this thing um I, because this one uh let me see uh, we need to uh find all the um the value of the things uh, i just go, go out and for from this um <coughs> horizontal alignment we need to look at this this the, there's a table here the table 4.4 .4. um we to find all the horizontal comp uh, parts of a, the the uh, all the things in the horizontal curve so we need to find the spiral length uh, we need to find the radius, spiral angle, the shift. So this one, you know, the, you can use this to find the shift as well, the shift distance as well. So this one, uh, this one is regardless of the design speed. So whatever design speed we have, we just, we whether it's travel at thirty k or whether it's travel hundred k, we use the same table. And then, um, when we get all this value, we use the multi the scaling factor scaling factor which is which just now we say is a unique code so we use that unique code to multiply whatever value here and that give us the required radius uh, so okay this one is the table 4.4 .4. so this one from uh, <coughs> from the angle you know we, we use you, you could use the th the phi or theta but I think I you, you normally use theta so from zero the angle of theta zero until all the way up to I think <coughs> eighty, eighty. The theta is equal to eighty degree. Okay, so uh, the eighty de eighty degree. Yes. <coughs> so this is the table that we're going to use. Um, <coughs> so I just fast forward. I think I uh, you see just just now this one we have that. Uh, uh, because we have this, you know, this example, this example, we have this um, tangent deflection angle, and then we got this uh, this ratio, uh, transition circular and 
transition 1 2 1 and then we got the spiral angle this spiral angle you get from the theta you know the theta is from <coughs> this one theta theta is here depending on the different uh, ratio then we get a theta equal to i divided by 5 or theta equal to i divided by 6 or divided by 7 divided by 8 so so from this um we get a spiral angle this much and then uh, we go to the um the table 2.9 we can get the the unit called let's say for 80k <coughs> So for 80k, you know, 80k, let's say the rotation 18.6. So this one is a, we need to get this unit curve. <coughs> so, <coughs> so from this and then we from we look after you get this one, we we got a theta equal to uh, five degree uh, two point one. So we just go to that. I think this one. Um, it doesn't show you five degree. So this one is five degree. We know five degree. Then we go to that. Uh, we need to find all these uh, spiral angle, the radius, shift, shift distance, spiral length, and all these things. Later on, we're going to multiply by the scaling factor. Then give us the radius of the rod transition length and the shift and that much and all these things. Then also this, all these later on, we're going to find the um, tangent length, external distance, circular arc land you know so you know from from this one the um, theta from this theta then we we can go to this um <coughs> theta let's say just now we say it's five degrees isn't it five degree <coughs> it'll be some way here five degree okay here five degree so you need to find all the radius here i told you that i think this one is the i just go up here a bit you can see uh yeah this one is um the spiral this one is the uh the the angle phi and then the first one is spiral okay is spiral 2.5 and then we have the um, radius radius this one is uh they say 14.32 and then we have the shift shift is uh, 0 0.0181 and then the shift distance is um <coughs> how much is that 1.2497 okay so um <coughs> so from this uh you know the from the um, uh the speed design speed we can find the uh, from from the design speed from the ratio of this the the angle the t 30 degrees and then you can find the theta theta from the theta we go to the um, um the table just now table 4.4 .4, and then find all this all this thing and then all this value here then we multiply by the the um unit cord we from table 2.9 we just now we, we saw it you we got that and then we find it and also this one the um, uh, we can find the tt the tangent length et and l uh, which is uh, you know the <coughs> where is that? Uh, <coughs> so whether it's uh, you know this one the the circular arc they, they have the tangent length as well. Um, both for both the um, this one's perpendicular curve you know this one they have this um this one the et as well and then the arc length. Uh, L the circular art land this one also for this one the you know this one just table is for the uh, for the plane transition curve you know for um, <coughs> so you can find all this value TT L and ET it L is the land of that and then ET is that one and then the TT TT A or TT B so this is the tangent from this TS, this point here, until the intersection point. <coughs> okay, so I think uh, I sort of I covered the whole thing, just uh, you know, the uh, going to and fro, to and fro, so I can cover the 
how to find the um, um, from this uh, ratio you know and then all this theta the from you know the this theta from the angle from the the deflection angle on the curve on the you know from the the two straight line at the intersection section point change of in change of direction of the rocks so there's a deflection angle i and then from that this one you from that you know for different ratio then we can get a different um fact different uh sort of theta <laughs> and then we we just um um we just go to the table uh, you know the first we go to to get the the minimum unit cord for the different speed to get the minimum the minimum unit cord and then we go to the table 4.4 and you find all the value that one is the uh, just the um, um sort of um um un, unscale value of the spiral angle radius shift shift distance spiral length regardless is 30k or 80k or 100k um, then you based on your design speed then you have got a scaling factor so you just multiply by that you know, you've got, if you're 100 then you've got a different vector is higher than 18.6 so then give all the things you know all the value for the circular curve <coughs> okay yep okay I think I stop here uh, for the first part of this on horizontal alignment I will go I think I continue the next part later on <laughs>